My name is Sebastian and in this video I want to show you how to come up with development workflows that allow you to stay in a flow experience. Because programming is very much a flow activity and one that allows us to fully immerse ourselves into the task. But there are very much differences how we build up our local environment, our dev environment, and whether or not it allows us to fully focus. I have two examples for you. One is a Java app with a Java backend development by Quarkus and the other one is a front-end example. So let's start with the first one and uh, I will show you my points here. So the first one uses Maven to build the so-called coffee shop project and uh, if you're familiar with that technology you might already assume well I probably in order to try it out locally have to build that Maven project and then somewhat have to compile and build it and then start it up either locally or using a, a technology such as Docker containers. But that turnaround that always takes a few seconds, right? So imagine I'm coding on some, well, some Java code here, it doesn't really matter. And then once I want to try this out locally, I would have to build my project. For example, I could switch to the command line and say, well, please build this Maven a project using a command such as Maven package. So we go and compile all our code and package everything together. And in my example, I don't even include some sophisticated tests. The only things I'm including run actually very fast, but still it takes, well, seven seconds, right? And if I now would go and uh, start it up, for example, just locally by starting up this jar file by saying java-jar uh, target something like uh, Quarkus app and please run the whole example. Then that also takes another second, which is super fast, right? Which is something we should appreciate because this was not always the case in the past, but still you're pretty much, um, you need 10 seconds to start it up, to have this turnaround. And I claim this is too slow because if I code something and I have an example that I don't want to, or that I cannot, um, verify using unit tests, but I need to have the fully deployed app, then, well, this doesn't quite work. So let's see a different example. But just to show the point now here, I could, for example, go and check out, this is just a boring health check example. It says, well, my application is up and running in some version. Okay, whatever. But if I would like to change something very basic, like the name here or some version, then I would already need to change my code or some configuration wherever that comes from. And then I need to wait 10 seconds. And this, if you always need to wait 10 seconds, that's just too slow. Why? Because we're human. We humans get distracted. And then of course we go on to do something else, right? We might check our email. We might look at Slack and all these things. And then we're, you know, our attention is gone. So it's not really the 10 seconds that I'm complaining about, or even five seconds or something like that but the energy that it adds up to, which, well, could be improved. So we should invest some time to look into other alternatives if there is another way and that regards our overall development environment in general to start up things or to speed up uh, our processes. So what I want to show you instead, and if you know about this Quarkus technology, you probably uh, have heard about this development mode. So there is a Quarkus dev development mode that starts up um, this project a little bit differently. And again, this video is not really about Quarkus or not per, um, per se. It is much more about uh, the way how to do things here a little bit faster. So now after some short waiting time, my app is up and running. So I can now just refresh this again and it still works. And now I would like to change something. So for example, I want to change some code here. Let's say this is boring. I want to come up with a different uh, version. I say one, two, one. And now I would like to, well, change this. So in the previous example, I would need to build it up again. But now in this development mode, I can simply uh, hit refresh here, or I do the same on the command line. If I say Q slash health, and now I see that's one, two, one because very quickly this development mode has restarted my application. So I can do this again, do something else, one, two, zero. And then very quickly it restarts and it gives me the new um, response. 
And this is true for all kinds of code. So I could change some configuration, I could change some Java code, I can even do something where the compilation fails, and it would just try again and try again until it works. But the point here really is that you come up with a workflow that doesn't make you wait. So now if I change some code, like some production code, I can just uh, quickly hit refresh, and then, you know, see the uh, see whether it works, get some feedback. But much more importantly, I can also combine this with my tests. Why? Because this is another thing that usually takes a long time by just waiting for builds with tests that, for example, build up their own environment or have their own life cycle or where they're tangled to my application's life cycle. And then bottom line, I just have to wait a long time until the whole build and the whole test passes. And this is just too much time. While in, I'm in the state of coding, I want fast feedback. So for that reason, I have a test example here, which of course is not just a unit test, I actually do have a unit test as well, you probably saw this already ran with the Maven build with the usual Maven build. But this so called integration test, it connects to my running application. So it's basically assumes that the um, application is already up and running, and then just test some stuff. So I could run this uh, here in my IDE, for example. And the only issue is that the first time the IDE just takes a few seconds to, to wake up. So these were maybe three or four seconds now. And now the tests are already executed. So once the tests are running, they are really fast. Why? Because what I'm doing here, I'm not relying on um, the tests that they have to build up my environment because my environment has already been started up. So I'm separating the life cycles of my tests or of these things, these small actions that I want to trigger, like any verification, any system test, any whatever, and the overall environment that I started up in the beginning of my development session. So the point is that in the beginning, I start up something like this Quarkus development mode or whatever technology you're using. And then the short turnaround times, these short inner, uh, inner loops, these inner cycles, they are fast. So here, of course, this failed. Why? Because it checks for the version. So it goes to the health check, basically, connects to my system, says, well, local host, so and so forth, please check that the version equals to one, two, three. Well, that's not the case anymore. So let's quickly change this back. And now let's re execute the test again. So I basically just uh, triggered the test. And hopefully now it works. And you saw how this works, right? How fast is this? I triggered the test again. And now I can continue coding, I don't even have time to get distracted, I don't even have time to pull out my phone and um, check something else. So that is pretty much the point to uh, allow this not only for your production code, but also for your tests to get super fast feedback. And now you might say, well, this is a rather uh, simple example. Yes, that's true. But the same holds true if you have a more complex example. So in this one, I'm running only the application this coffee shop here. But I've created uh, in the past, I've created some content how this also works. And that's pretty cool. Um, to run this in Docker containers, where you have multiple applications being deployed. So what does this mean? Let me show you the following. If for example, I had something like um, my coffee shop and um, a database or some that is uh, that is called barista some other application, I can run all three of these in containers, for example, but I still can use this mechanism to mount the sources into this development mode that runs inside a container. So this works as well. And why this is really helpful? Well, because then I can start up all this environment here. And then I can keep this running during my development session and just get the super fast feedback all the time. So no matter whether I change my production code or my test code or I execute the test, I should get the feedback within five seconds or less. That's for me, that's kind of like the threshold. If it takes much longer than that, I know I will get annoyed and I will get distracted. So I will invest some time to actually make it faster, whatever that means. For example, locally, you can have some hacky scripts, some shell scripts that build up some environment or some hacky approaches that reload some stuff locally. That's totally fine. Why? Because it's very pragmatic, it will save you time. And it will make you more effective over time. Even if that approach is not perfect, doesn't matter if it saves you nine out of 10 times the, um, the refresh, the reload, then you gained a lot already. 
So this is the example how to start up um, with a Java backend example and where to take it uh, even with a more complex approach if you have multiple um, systems. So again, this is an example where I would have some networking approach where I need multiple applications locally, not just my coffee shop, but others, but that also should work. I can show you just um, a shell script, for example. So this is super basic and I'm definitely not a best scripting expert, but these things I build up locally very often just to help myself because they make me really productive. If I write this, uh, even if it's not perfect in the beginning, doesn't matter. Um, I write these bunch of commands that I otherwise need to um, trigger locally. And then um, I don't have to do this myself. So I save some time, even if it's just some as simple as Docker run, Docker run, Docker run, please connect to this um, remote uh, dev workflow. And that's it. So I claim there's already uh, quite some value in this to make you more effective. Now to the second example, uh, which is a front end um, example. And of course, there are also a lot of tools out there. And for front end development, it should be even more somewhat obvious to have such an approach. Why? Because these things have been around uh, for actually much longer. And also for the reason that for front end development, the resources that we are uh, writing and that we're reloading tend to be uh, less complex in their build, right? So I can, for example, start off with a, a really basic HTML page. And then of course, I just have to um, modify the plain sources. I don't have to build or compile them. In many cases, I of course can, depends on the technology, but I don't have to. Uh, what you can do in this case, for example, and um, we could have a similar approach like this uh, coffee testing uh, example here, which also comes with some um, HTML um, pages, which here looks a little bit weird because that is included in my Java project, but really doesn't matter uh, if that's uh, part of a Java project or not. But what I can do here is that I can start up some tool. For example, I will use browser sync to sync my sources to a, um, a browser to just make it really fast to reload and see um, my see my results. So I could go into this coffee shop project and I think it's source main uh, resources, to, um, something like this. And then I will use uh, browser sync and just tell the um, directories that I would uh, like to have, which is here, templates and meet the in, in resources. I know for a front end developer, this looks super weird. Why is this develop? Uh, why is this directory structure? Well, because of the Java project that I'm using, but doesn't matter, it could be a plain directory of only HTML um, and JavaScript and CSS uh, resources or whatever you want to do. And then what it does, it already starts up um, a browser here. And here this looks a little bit weird because of the templating syntax. But you see that this is already uh, the website that I have. And what I could do, two things, either I could use some um, the IDE that I have here. So for example, I could say, uh, well, please just uh, change this, for example. So change um, status, status, test. Hello world. So just um, change these here and you see that you have the um, changes immediately being reflected. Of course, this works inside um, my IDE or any other um, editor as well. So I could go coffee testing. Yes. So I could go into this with just Vim, which I usually use, and then change it here and see the changes immediately being reflected. What I typically even do is I put this side by side. So I see this even faster. And that is the type of feedback that I want. I want immediate feedback here. Why? Because otherwise I get distracted or I get bored. The same, of course, works uh, if I have a style, sh uh, style sheet, something like that. So I can come up with uh, with fancy thing things that even work really well as uh, for some debugging type of action. So I could say, well, just for fun, put in some background color for um, this headline. And then I can see if I um, add some padding, for example, and I see what, what this includes. 
and say, no, this was wrong. I want it like that. And then you immediately uh, see the changes being there once you hit save. So that's just one example how to build up with uh, such a workflow that just gives you immediate feedback, whatever technology you use. If it's a little bit more complex than that in your um, local development for your front end project, then you can do that as well. For example, you could include some shell script that then triggers a build. Of course, you could use any other tool uh, such as a node or whatever is hot these days. But the point is that you need fast feedback to just see, well, what's uh, what's going on and to immediately uh, have, have the feedback whether what you did uh, works or not. And that is very, very important, not just for the, uh, the sources, not just for the type of production uh, code that you're using, but also for the tests. So if you include some more sophisticated tests, um, like my system test, quote unquote, example that already verify the deployed application, also that should give you immediate feedback. So whatever type of development you're doing, you need to come up with such a workflow that gives you that fast response. This works for backend development, frontend development, also for all kinds of other stuff. I'm typically in the Java space, but even if you have a standalone Java app, then you can use your IDE, have some debug and hot reload or um, uh, class hot swap techniques to just quickly make that thing restart. And again, even if it doesn't, it doesn't work 100% of the time, there's a lot of value if you get that working 90% of the time because it saves you not only these few seconds, but the energy required. It does not distract you. And to be honest, it's also so much more fun to code in such an environment that gives you uh, this fast response and we are allowed to stay in this flow experience. Also, as a takeaway, what to avoid, we should avoid some slow builds, at least the ones where we actively wait for their results. If it's more than just a few seconds or even minutes, that will just slow us down. We also should avoid some test environments where the test scenarios already trying to start up some environments that just, well, make us wait again. And instead, what we should do is to build up a local de um, development environment that we start up in the beginning of our coding session because it's totally fine if that needs 20 seconds or one minute or five minutes even if i then can go and grab a coffee while that is starting up but don't make me wait while i'm in the coding flow that is really important so we should separate these two type of forms Automation scripts can help a lot with that. Also, they don't need to be perfect. They just should be pragmatic and should not make us wait. So I hope this was helpful. If you found the video helpful, then I would really appreciate if you uh, keep it a like or if you subscribe to the channel. And thanks a lot for watching. Bye.